There we go. Hey, Zoe, my fellow herd mate from the EGCM program. Well, you're a graduate now. I am. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank wow. You. Now, did you attend Summit this year and walk the stage or did you do it last year? Last year. I graduated last year in July. Wow. Yeah. You're a busy girl. Like you're not just doing equine gestalt coaching, but you also coach riding. Mm -hmm. So what, what what's that all about? Tell me about that too, because I don't know that part of you. Yeah. So I originally started with my dream job being as a trainer and training horses and teaching people in that sense. Um, and so I've been working with horses for about nine years, a little over nine years now. And um, last year when I graduated, um, the Gestalt coaching program, I also started up my own training business. And so, um, I've had a handful of clients, just some from beginners, some show at higher level jumping. Um, it's a very big mix of things. Mm. And my main focus with it is just figuring out what works for the horse. And so it's a, a really fun way for me to be able to share my love and passion of horses and also honor the horses with it. And, Show that with other equestrians. That is beautiful. Now, do you typically, do you use your own horses or do you coach other riders with their own horses? Combination, how does, how does that work? Yeah, it's a mix of both. So I have um, one pony that I'm able to teach lessons on right now, Bach. And um, so I do beginner lessons with him. He does really well with just little kids and walking and trotting and basic kind of stuff. And then my higher level students have their own horses and I um, drive out to their barns and train them. Wow. Yeah, you are busy. And <laughs> how do you manage to now are your horses home or are, you, are they at a boarding facility? And do you own that facility or do you board or how does that all work too? So right now I'm boarding at two different facilities. Oh. Um, eventually I'd love to have my own property and have them in, in my space um, and be able to live on the same land as them and, and be their full-time caretakers in that sense too. Um, so that's something I'm working towards. But right now I'm boarding in two different places. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are a busy young lady. And since you've graduated from the equine gestalt coaching program, how's that going for you? What are you doing? It's going pretty well. I um, mostly work with teenagers. So when I was a teenager, that's how I found gestalt was going as a client myself. Oh. And so that's what my drive was to become a gestaltist and be able to give back and help teenagers so that's been my main thing is doing groups with them and one-on-ones and things like that nice nice yeah. you're an old soul Zoe you are you are and hey for any of our our watchers um I will put all of Zoe's information her url her email address all her contact information in the description box below so that if you're out in her area where's your area um so i'm in uh, mostly working out of lakewood colorado right now okay so if you're in the lakewood area of colorado reach out to this beautiful human being that i love um just for my my one you know core interaction mm -hmm. with you which was a week long um you know that's when I realized what a divine wonderful soul you are and uh, an old soul I might add um but definitely um people who are watching if you want to to look into the equine gestalt work check out Zoe um you won't be, you won't be sorry. Amazing work. Tell us, tell us, tell us your elevator speech, girl. <laughs> oh, oh, we're um, doing foundation training now. <laughs> yeah, it oh. honestly, it changes a lot based off of um, what I'm doing at the time. I'm very big on helping people in general. And so I don't have a very specific one, even though I probably should. Um, I 
my passion is helping people and sharing the magic of horses through healing. And that's a very basic way of how I explain that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. They're powerful. This work is insanely yeah. powerful. And it's, yeah. as we both know, it's more than talk therapy. That's for sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, we get in, we get it done. That yeah. We can live, right? Live our yeah. true authentic selves, you know? Yeah, exactly. The experiential part of it is, is so powerful for everybody. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Goodness. So how old were you when you discovered you had the horse bug? Hmm. Um, Birth. So <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> um, I didn't really start working with horses until I was like 12 or 13. I was in middle school. Um, I'd taken like a couple lessons when I was like eight, but never really stuck with it just because we didn't find the right place and, and whatever else was going on. But I've always known that I've meant to work with horses. I asked my mom, I'm like, when did I start? Like, what was that? She was like, I've, I've always said it. And I, it was just a, a very inner intuition knowing my entire life. It was just a matter of time until it started happening. What a beautiful journey you've embarked on. And I'm when I say this, please don't take it the wrong way as someone who's, you know, getting on in age, although I have spent my entire life like you much as you have with horses, but to be able to create a beautiful career and path mm -hmm. with equine at this stage in your life is just you know, I look at that and just applaud it. Like, oh my gosh, wow, wow. You get to, this is your life. This is your career. This is your passion. It's so much. It's so exciting. And I'm, yeah. you know, I wish I could stay on the planet for, you know, <laughs> six more decades just to watch you transform, you mm -hmm. know, into what I truly see happening here, which is, magnificent I, i'm it's it's exciting it really is and it makes my heart soar to know that you are in a position to help so many especially teenagers that are trying to find their path you know mm -hmm. and they can relate to you and you to them and they'll trust you because you can it's not like some old hag like me like now listen sonny i'm gonna tell you what you gotta do and that's wrong you know it's different yeah. It really is. Yeah. They, you know, I'm better off like relating to people my own age. Yeah. Truly. So not that you're a teenager because you're beyond that, but still yeah. close enough that yeah. you can still relate and remember and understand. And that goes a long way. Oh my yeah. gosh. So yeah. I would I would love to open up your your pictures, if I may. Hey, where'd you go? Where'd they go? Oh, for crying out loud. Just give me one second. Because okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna open them up again. There we go. Let's see. Bring me back. I'd like to share my screen. Here we go. Can you see? I can. What's going on here? Um, so that is me on my Arabian court. He was my first horse. Um, I've had him for about six years now. Okay. Um, there's a jumper show in Estes Park, Colorado every year in July. And that is my favorite place in the world is Estes Park. It has been for a very long time. And so whenever I get the chance to bring my horses up there, I go show it that. And I think that was my first year showing up there too. Oh my gosh. How, what, what's the year here? Do you think how long ago? Um, I want to say it was like four or five years ago. Wow. Look yeah. at him. It's a, it's, is it a gelding or a mare? I can't. Yep. He's a gelding. He's quite athletic. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's cool. He was started in dressage. Um, had the woman I bought him from is an amazing dressage rider and trainer. And um, so he was started in that and then did a little jumping, couple jumps here and there. And then when I got him, we really started him on the show jumping training. 
And he, he actually looks like he enjoys it. Oh, he loves it. He loves to go. And um, he's my cool one. We, I've done a lot of different disciplines with him. So we've done English stuff, Western. We did 4-H. Um, he loves barrel racing. Um, I've ridden him tackless and jumped him tackless. He's, he's wow. one of the coolest horses that I'll ever get to work with. He's amazing. Now, do you have him still? Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. Nice. What's his name? Court. His registered Court. name is Cortez Kidman, but we call him Court. Is he full Arab? He is. Yeah. Very in Arabian. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my. Who's this? That is Eve. Um, I've had her for almost a year now. It'll be a year next week. Oh, was this a summit horse? Yep. Mm. I bought her as my birthday present for myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah cause I, I think I signed the papers the day after my birthday. Wow. So, yeah, she, when I was originally looking for a horse, I didn't want an Arabian, I didn't want a bay, and I didn't want a gelding. <laughs> I wanted a Palomino paint mare. Um, and then court came into my life and was like, well, you're getting a Bay Arabian gelding. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and so my first heart horse was a Palomino paint mare. Oh. And so that's always been a very special thing for me. And there have been a couple that have shown up, but not really been the right one. And, um, she, Casey, who sold her had posted her on Facebook like six months before summit. And there was just a voice in my head that was like, that's your horse. I was like, I can't buy another horse. I can't afford that. Like there was just that whole thing. But I messaged her. I was like, hey, can you just give me some info? Yeah. I can't do this right now, but I just have to ask. <laughs> um, a couple months went by. She messaged me again. Hey, she's still for sale. Do you want her? If not, we're going to bring her to Colorado because she was in Nebraska. Um, and then I was like, no, I just, I can't do it. I can't buy another one. She showed up at Summit and I saw Casey walking her into the arena from few hundred feet away and I started crying oh wow and it was like okay and it took me I want to say like five or six days to finally say okay let's see if we can make this work um because I was like okay is this the Palomino paint mare is it just because she's a Palomino paint mare like what's going on there um and then I had an animal communicator talk to her and she was like if you're willing to commit then I want you as my person so I was like, all right, I'll do whatever it takes. Let's make it work. And I managed to make it work within a couple of days. It's funny how that happens when yeah. it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And you just, you can't turn that voice off. That's like, no, yeah. this is it. I've done the same thing where I'm like, no, I'm just going to go to look. I just want to check it out. I'm not in the market. And then next thing you know, I'm like, you know, scheduling deliveries and yeah, you just, you can't, you can't shut that voice off. No way. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. This is her too, with the little, little furry. Yep. Yeah. What's her name? Eve. Eve? Mm-hmm. Oh. She came to me, um, her name was Dora, and I didn't really feel like it fit. And then uh, my boyfriend and I talked a lot about names for horses and stuff. And he actually came up with the name Eve because that was the first woman and she's my first mare. And it just, it fit really well. Oh, and this is Court. Yep. Riding bridalist. You are quite the equestrian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of pictures back, actually, there was a, a Palomino that had her head up against my chest. Okay. Um, that was a different one. That was my Oh, it game. was. Oh, I skipped right over it. Yep. That was the, the original Palomino paint oh. mare. Oh. photo is actually my logo now. Oh, that's you took that picture and put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Is this you? Yep. That was like my very first riding lesson I ever took. Oh, um, I took like two lessons at this barn and it was just not the right fit. But yeah, that was me when I was like, gosh, like seven or eight, I think. Oh, when you got the really got the bug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, gosh. I, my second lesson, the trainer was like, this horse is for sale. And I was like, okay, let's get it, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents were like, let's see if you're going to stick with this. First. <laughs> it's not um, a trombone or a flute or. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was, oh my it was gosh. Yeah, this is, this is right. it. Who's who here? Are you on the um, horse? Is that you? I'm on the horse. 
Yep, that's me on on a friend's horse, Sammy. Um, and we were actually doing vaulting. That's yeah. Wow. So you're a gymnast too. You're an equestrian <laughs> gymnast. Okay. All right. Now I'm be. really feeling like I'm inadequate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no, no, For you. Yeah, I just I have a bunch of stuff. You know, it's fun, especially as equestrians. We are athletes, and there's so many different ways to do that. And I think learning a bunch of different disciplines makes you better at whatever your main one is. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is still court, huh? Yep. Quite the athlete. Look at those oh, yeah. front legs. So perfect. He's amazing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that was more recent. So I've been ponying court off of Eve um, when I don't have time to ride both of them because I'm so busy. I'll <laughs> hop on her and pony him and we'll play around the trail. And... Oh my. Next year we'll see you with eight horses behind you. <laughs> Zoe, what did you do? <laughs> Make my herd bigger. Oh, love. Yep. I'm going to be flipping through. Look at this. Now, how old is court now? He's 14 now. He turned Aww. 14 this year. Yeah. This is someone else. Yeah, that's a horse named Memphis. He was a client's horse that um, they let me show in a Western dressage show. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. He was cool. What are all the disciplines that you do then? Um, Just so list them. Name them. Yeah, I've just oh. I've tried a bunch of different things. So my main one's show jumping. Um, so I've done show jumping, English dressage, Western dressage. I've tried vaulting. Um, I've shown in 4-H, which is like English and Western flat classes, barrel racing, pole bending, keyhole, all that kind of um, Gymkhana stuff. Done tackless stuff. Like there were a couple of pictures in there of that. So I just, if I have the opportunity to try it, I do. Um, Memphis, that horse I was doing the Western dressage on, he's actually a reigning horse. And so I got to learn some of the really basic spinning and some of the sliding stops with him wow yeah oh what's your favorite part of partnering with these horses what is the absolute favorite part well like this oh <laughs> my. yeah that's my boss um oh gosh it's so hard to pick a favorite thing they the horses are are my my life they're the love in my life they're what really keep me going and motivate me and everything and they're so willing to give back what would they life have... I'm sorry honey go ahead yeah would... I was just what... they you know they don't have to give me anything they don't have yeah. to do any of this and I give all of my horses that choice I tell them you're allowed to have an opinion and please tell me you know if you don't like this unless it has to do with safety or health um, then you get to tell me if you want to do this or not. They, they don't have to let me ride them. They don't have to step up for the gestalt work. They, they owe me nothing. And so the fact that they don't have to, and they want to, and they're so willing is, it fills my heart. It's amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. And of course they're willing because you give them the choice. You know, yeah. I have conversations with my guys all the time. Well, every day every day, you know, and I find that it does make a difference there, you know, the day days that the vet is showing up or, you know, just for a wellness visit, or they need to get their dental work done or their feet done. I share with them every morning while I'm feeding breakfast guys, you know, Mark's yeah. on his way and we're going to get our feet done. And Teddy, if you need a little banamine to take the edge off, cause he's old, he's navicular. I'm like, mama, we'll give it to yeah. you. Let us know. Don't worry. I won't let anybody hurt you, you know, and all their appointments just go so smoothly. And I swear to you, and I don't care who thinks I'm a kook, especially my 28 year old with navicular when he gets done and he's the only one who's allowed to have hand treats because he doesn't do anything, but be retired he will take a couple strides, stop, look back at me, and I can hear as clear as day, thank you. And the look on his face of just love. And yeah, it's, I, yeah. So that's, it's beautiful that you, you ask, you, um, 
you don't boss, you're not telling you're, you are a true partner with your horses and it shows. I mean, as, as I look at these beautiful pictures, you can feel the connection just from the pictures. Who's this? <laughs> That's oh, true. Really, that's my mini. Oh. Um, yeah. So I, the only horse I was actually ever looking for was Court. The other three just showed up and decided they were part of my herd. Um, so I had Court and Bach at this time, and Bach didn't like any other horses. He wouldn't share food. He didn't want to live in a pen with them. He'd bully the big Clydesdale that he'd get put in with in the Warm Bloods. Um, and then Charlie showed up at the barn and he was for sale and Bach saw him from a few hundred feet away and was like, that is my mini. And I was like, okay, you know, if this is who you're choosing to be your buddy, cause he didn't like anybody else. He didn't get along with anybody. He just, you know, and he saw him and was like calling to him like he'd known him. And there was, I don't think they ever had met each other. Um, and so I was like, if this is, you know, who your buddy is and they, instant connection just loved each other we're sharing food the second they met like oh my god it just it was it was meant to be and yeah so he this was um I think this was when I first met him and then he was about four years old then so yeah oh my gosh that's beautiful they knew yeah. each other in another life oh I'm sure yeah Let's see. What are you doing here? Barrel racing? What kind of Jim Canna? <laughs> that was one of our 4-H shows. Um, when I was in high school, I did 4-H with Court. Wow. So, yeah, I don't know what classes we were going into, but it was like the Western Flat classes and the Pattern and then the Jim Canna. So we were headed to one of those. Is this the new mayor? Yep, that's Eve. Um, she was started in Western. I don't know that she's had an English saddle on her, but I do both with all of my horses. So um, we were playing around English and this was one of the first videos and pictures I actually got of me on her. Nice. Yeah. Oh, who's this one? That's Bach. That's, That's Bach. Oh. Yep. Do you own him too? Mm -hmm. Oh, Zoe. They're yeah. like potato chips, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you doing gestalt work here or are you teaching him? Um, this was actually during my summer camp. So I held two weeks of summer camp this year. Um, oh. And he was terrified of the hula hoop. The part of the camp was the kids were learning how to lead the horses and lead them through obstacle courses and that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, and he was terrified of the hula hoop. So we were doing some desensitizing training with him. And then we had a little cuddle session after oh those are scary those hula hoops <laughs> there's Bach again right yep yep that's the the summer camp so those kids on the rail were um all in the camp and I was explaining that was their first day riding so I was explaining how the bridle works and all that kind of stuff and um he's bitless Bach and Eve I ride both of them bitless so Is there a reason them. that you that you ride bitless I know I have one horse who's got dental issues mm -hmm. unfortunately is a life cribber um that I ride in that setup as well what is what's so, going on with him um Bach before I got him um did a lot of stuff with kids because he's a pony so he actually did fox hunting with a little kid and then I was told before that family owned him that he did show jumping on the east coast circuit wow. um and any bit that I tried, he just didn't like. I think he had had a lot of kids using his mouth to balance him. Um, and so I decided as long as he's safe and will listen, there's no reason to put a bit in his mouth if he doesn't want it anymore. So I don't. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yep, that's the summer camp too. So that was um, one of the riding lessons during it. Do you get volunteers to help handle? Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. Hey, I recognize this place. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little, little bit north ranch in Elizabeth, Colorado. There you are.
Did you bring your horses to Melissa's? Yeah, so I had, um, I think it was either my last core or my second to last core. I actually brought all three of my boys um, to oh. see. I had brought Court once before, so this was his second time there. And then the other two I wanted to bring um, to see how they would show up in the work during a core. And then um, Kim Beer was there. And so we scheduled um, a photo shoot too. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I got to have all three of them there and see them work and nice. get some really nice pictures with them too. And this was before I had Eve. So that's why she's not in those group ones. Are you coaching here or are you a client? Yep. This is coaching. Nice. Yeah. Oh, look at, this is your pony right here. Your mm -hmm. mini. Yep. Yep. They <laughs> love to work out. together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I can do that too, mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Oh, here we go. How did it go with them? Who did you find to be the best partner or did they, were they all equally as good? They all do different things. They all have different kind of specialties that they'll do with clients. Um, at that specific core, they were all, the temperature had been dropping. Bach and Charlie had to be separated some of the time because one of them would be in the round pen and one wouldn't. So they were all just kind of, Full of themselves that week um but they did show up when they needed to and they all just show up in different ways um court's pretty selective when he shows up Bach will show up every single client every single time um charlie will if i bring him out but if Bach does it charlie's like yeah he's got it we're good <laughs> he, he'll work on me a lot actually oh, charlie cool. will yeah Great photos. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You know love your babies much, huh? <laughs> yeah. They're they're everything to me. And this is home doing some coaching? Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is where Bach and Charlie are boarded at. Um, it's just my friend's facility. And so it's a very private space for us because I'm the only boarder. Um, so it's really nice to be able to work there. But yeah, that's our arena. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And they're getting into it. Mm hmm. Oh, and this is Zoe's equine gestalt coaching program. Um, coaching. Wow. I just got had a loss for words. I'll be cutting this out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Zoe's Mindful Harmony Coaching logo. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And again, for everyone that's watching, just look in the description box and you will find all of Zoe's contact information. And if you don't live within, um, you know, driving distance to Zoe, you certainly can do Zoom coaching with her, right? I'm sure you offer that as well. And yeah. um, Wow, this has been wonderful, Zoe. In, in our closing, is there anything you'd like to add? Feel free. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, gosh, I can't think of anything else I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited for you. I'm uh, in awe of you. And um, I look forward to just uh, continuing to watch your journey because it's, it's pretty impactful and amazing as you are. So I thank you for this time, my friend. And we will be in touch. I'm going to stop the recording now.